Praise the Lord. Welcome everyone to this great service. It promises to be a great time in God's presence. Can we go ahead and lift up our voice in worship and thanksgiving to God? There's none like our God. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 100, Know ye that the Lord is God. Give him praise. Let's enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Let's worship him. There's none like our God. Wherever you're watching from in Nigeria and across the world, make sure you are giving God quality thanks. When you are standing before a dignitary, you are reverent before that person. This is the almighty God, greater than all the presidents of the world, greater than any ruler, greater than any person. Give him worship. Adore him. Father, we lift your name on high. We praise you because you alone are God. You are Yahweh, the first and the last, the Lord of hosts. We give you worship. Thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for what you're said to do in our midst. Thank you for your word. Thank you because they looked unto you and they were lightened. Thank you because every issue shall be handled by the power of the Holy Ghost. The anointing of the Spirit is upon the airwaves. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Receive our thanksgiving. Just before we go, can you go ahead and ask God for something specific? 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 9. Elijah said to Elijah, Ask what I shall do to you. Do for you before I'm taken from you. There is no other opportunities than now. So you can lift up your voice and ask for something specific. Something specific. Lord, this is what I desire in this service. Send me your word. The word that will answer every question of my heart. The word that will transform my life. I'm looking forward to your word. Lord, I pay attention. I pay attention to your word today. Thank you, Lord, for revelation coming. I receive understanding. I'm sure you are praying. Connect now because something is about to happen for you. Something spectacular, something you'll never forget for the remaining days of your life. I know it's going to be a great time in God's presence. Lift up your hands and give him thanks. It's going to be a great moment. Give him worship. There's none like our God. Thank you, Father. We open this service in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Here we are. Lifting our hands to you. Yes. Here we are. Giving you thanks for all you do. As we praise and worship your holy name. You are here, dwelling within our praise. Everybody praise him. For every answered prayer. For every answered prayer. Oh, yes. For always being there. For love, yeah. For love that hears is when we call. For arms that lift us. Lift us when we fall, you have always been right beside us, leading us all along the way. We've made it through. Oh, yes, we have. Because of you. Because of you, Lord, you. your hands wherever you are.
praise, Lord, you are here. Yes, you are. You are here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Dwelling within our praise. Hallelujah. God is here. God is here wherever you are. God is right there. Come on, can we celebrate him with a loud shout? Woo! Put those hands together wherever you are. Come on, just like this. You can get up on your feet and shout. Come on. He's worthy. Come on. Hey. Hallelujah. Are you ready? You've done everything. Come on. You've done everything for me. You've done everything for me. You've done everything for me. So I'm giving you the glory. Come on. You've done everything for me. You've done everything for me. You've done everything for me. Come on. What have you not done for me, for me, for me? Say that you've done everything. You've done everything. Oh, we take it one more step further. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah. You got it. Say you've done everything. You've done everything. Say you've done everything. You've done everything. Say you've done everything. Say you've done everything. Are you ready? So I give you the praise. So I give you the praise. So I gave 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 you a shout. 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 So I gave you a jump. So I gave you a jump. See the end of your grace. Say, oh, 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 oh. no man can see the end of your love. Come on, oh, 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 oh. no man can see the end of your glory. Glory, no, no, no. Oh, 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 oh. No man can know the end of your power. Say, oh, oh, oh. as far as the heaven stands, stands above the earth. You are exalted. 
shout, it won't be enough. And I will speak of the glory. Show for your beauty. If I dance, it will be enough. If I shout, you say, come on, you are the great.
Good day, everyone. My name is Toyin Lasaki. Um, the toughest job of, of um, my experience as a mom has got to be the moment when I have to guide them in their school work. Ah, it could be very frustrating the fact that sometimes I have to repeat things over and over again. And you know, I'm not a teacher, so it's at times very difficult. And um, the greatest joy of being a mom is the fact that they're just there. I have them. Oftentimes when they call me when I'm at work and they say, Mommy, when are you coming back home? Just gives me pleasure. Even when they are naughty, the fact that they're just there gives me great joy. Thank you. Hello. Uh, so let me start by saying that the joy of motherhood for me far outweighs the difficulty. But I'd say the toughest part for me is the constant multitasking. And I'm not referring to just the physical aspect, but I'm referring to the mental multitasking because like from sunrise to sunset there's constant planning there's constant fixing constant organizing constant coordinating it's really non-stop and it can really get tough but i'd say the joy the greatest joy of mother for me is watching my kids grow watching them achieve their different milestones sometimes something just as simple as their random hugs to seeing them smile you know it's a thing of joy for me and i'm thankful for the privilege and shout out to all the moms out there. Keep doing what you do. I see you. I love my mom. I love my mom because she's the best mom ever. She she helps me with my with my homework. I don't understand it. And and she plays with me even though she's busy. She tries to help me. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. My mother, my friend, so dear. Throughout my life, you have been so near. A tender smile to brighten up, to guide my way. You are the sunshine that brightens up my face. Happy Mother's Day. We love you, Mother. I love my mom because she makes good food for me. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Mommy, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all mothers. Happy Mother's Day, we love you. Happy Mother's Day. Mama, Mama, you know I love you. Ooh, you know I love you, Mama. Mama, you're the queen of my heart. When I walk through deep waters, I know that you will be with me. When I'm standing in the fire, I will not be overcome. Through the valley of the shadow Lord, I will not fear I am not alone I am not alone You will go before me And you will never
I see your light is breaking through The dark of night will not overtake me yeah. I am pressing into you Child of God, a child. 
child of God You split the sea so I could walk right through it My fears will drown in perfect love Yeah, you rescued me child of God Oh, you split the sea yeah. The sea so I could walk right through it You drown my fears in perfect love Oh, you rescued me Rescued me And I will stand and sing I am child of God. Yes, I am. I am a child of God. Yes, I am a child of God. Oh, I am a child Wow, good morning to you out there. Can we lift up our hands, lift up our voices, and bless the name of the Lord God in heaven? Go ahead, lift your voices, and give him thanks for a brand new day, a brand new week. This is the week the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I want you to uh, make sure you are giving God thanks. Don't just think it, express it from your heart. Let it come out of your mouth in a song, in words of gratitude. We want to thank Him for life. The Bible says that let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. So go ahead, if you are alive and you can hear me, you can see me as it were, you can hear me, and you are joining this stream, this beautiful new week, give, give God praise. Father, we bless you. Father, we thank you for this week. There is none like you. We want to say we are grateful for life. We are grateful for salvation. We are grateful for we have hope for tomorrow. We are grateful for helping us to still be able to fellowship one way or the other. We, we thank you for this week. We bless you for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, also uh, spend some moments to speak over the entire week. Uh, the, the things you say becomes your manifestation. Every word spoken with passion and faith in your heart constitute a creative force. So how the week will go is determine the name you give to the week. So wherever you are, I'd like you to name this new week and name it well. Name it from God's word. Begin to make declarations and say, Lord, this is the week God has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. My days are filled with laughter. My days are filled with joy. My steps are ordered of the Lord. I will not dash my steps against a stone. I am a blessed. Blessing. I am a blessing. I am a blessing. I am a global blessing. Speak the word of life over your spouse, over your children. Go ahead. It's your, it's your voice. Give it power. Declare it. The things you say based on God's word, angels, move it up. Angels move and begin to perform. So let's give the angels of God assignments to do this week. Go ahead and make declarations. Oh Lord, thank you for this week. We bless you. Every day there are days of heaven on earth. The heavens are open over us. We have an outpouring of your favor. Outpouring of your strength. We are strengthened in our inner man. Malako parakisa kitalaba pakala do prokete. We are protected. There shall no evil will befall us, nor any plague come near our dwelling place. In the name of Jesus, we are free from the pandemic. We will not dash our steps against a stone. We are free from depression. We are free from distraction. We are free from every satanic ploy or strategy to bring us down. Angels are guiding our steps in the name of Jesus Christ. Now before we conclude that prayer, can you go ahead and pray for others? Pray for other members 
members of the Global Impact family. Pray for others that you can, that, that you, that you can remember and say, Lord, the weak amongst us, let your strength be made perfect in their weakness. Pray for others. Pray for others. Pray for our older ones in the church, people that are 50, 60, 70, that God will strengthen them through this period. Pray for those who are married and that, that God will strengthen their homes. Pray for the singles, that the, uh, that the Holy Ghost will help them emotionally this week. Go ahead and pray for others. Malako keleda, makote kala de kate kosete, hakle dibo kosite da. Father, we give you praise. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you for this great family. We thank you for this great week. We declare that this is the week you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. In the name of Jesus. You can put your hands together where you are. You can put your hands together where you are and just uh, celebrate God. And then you can greet your neighbor, okay? I I'm sure you have somebody close to you, uh, except you are by yourself alone. If it's your husband or your friend or your daughter or your son, put your hands together and celebrate God for this beautiful new week. You're welcome to this great service today. Uh, remember, May is our family month, and uh, it's a month where God wants to establish greatness in families. Uh, God wants to restore families. God wants to do a lot of, you know, uh, uh, impartations of wisdom for families so that they can be better. Uh, so watch out for all our events this month. For instance, the last Sunday of the month is a special anointing service for family. I would expect you to get uh, points of contact like the uh, uh, olive oil and by the live stream, if we're still doing these uh, services like this, I'll be praying for families. We're going to anoint the children, anoint ourselves. Uh, it's a family anointing service. That's the last Sunday of the month of May. And then I think on the 24th of May, which is the next Sunday, where, of course, there'll be a lot of teachings. I'll be teaching on uh, Not Easily Broken. And then we'll be having a session for vow renewal, okay? So people will be renewing their vows next Sunday. Uh, I think if you are five years and above and you are willing to renew your vows, uh, the, 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 the groups involved will get to you, let them know. And then uh, after the prayers and the word next Sunday, we'll be having that vow renewal. It's an opportunity for couples to strengthen their union by making vows again. Some people have said that uh, when they did their vows, they can't even remember what they said. Some said they've made some mistakes along the line. Some say they've gone through some attacks. So they want a kind of refreshing, a kind of renewal. So the vow renewal service, we don't do it every year, but it's been planned for the year from the beginning of the year. So we want to still do it, how be it, online. So couples that are going to do that will dress up that day and then I'll be leading them in the vow and all those things. And they will hold each other, kiss each other. And then we would like you to take pictures that you are going to send to us. I want to show everybody all over the world. So if you are 10 years in marriage, 7 years in marriage, 12 years, 18 years, 25 years, 30 years, and you want to do your vow renewal, please ensure you get to the group, uh, the group heads of, for the small groups. And then you can register. And the next Sunday, we trust God for... An amazing time. Okay, so today we are, we are, we are, uh, we are continuing our discussions on uh, not easily broken. Remember I said last week that we are destined for greatness. You are in this particular ministry because God wants you to be an example of greatness. And a lot starts with the family. I remember we, uh, we discussed Genesis 18 verse 17. Genesis 18, verse 17. Uh, I'll read from the King James Version, and then I'll read the message translation too. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Can you imagine God saying, ah, should he hide something from Abraham? Wow. Now, verse 18 gave, gave us some clue to how or some, uh, some kind of inclination to help us see why God was so close to Abraham, why God was investing in Abraham. It says, verse 18 says, Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great 
and mighty nation. You will surely become a great and mighty nation in the name of Jesus. Since we are the seed of Abraham, okay? Uh, verse 18 again says, saying that Abraham shall surely, God is saying that he shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Now look at verse 19. Wow, I never thought God would have said that right there in Genesis. I thought he would have said something about maybe prayers or some other things. But he says, For I know him that they shall, for I know him that he will command his children and his household, household, that's his family, after him. He would, he would groom his family, he would build his family, and they shall keep the way of the Lord. So do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring. It looks like uh, the family part is important to the manifestation of Abraham's blessings. It says that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. So God elaborately said a lot of things about Abraham. And I'm so glad, if you look at it, when God was blessing Abraham, there was this uh, Sarah's inclusion. It wasn't just Abraham alone. God will say, okay, Abraham, I'm changing your name from Abraham to Abraham. And he didn't stop there. He said, Sarah, I'm going to change your name. There's something about God blessing the family. So when I started meditating on that, uh, the revelation that came to me, which is clear, God thinks generationally, transgenerationally. He wanted to invest a lot in Abraham, but he was looking at someone that we pass it on. God will not invest in a leaking vessel. The same way you will not put water in a leaking container. So he wanted to do so much in Abraham's life because Abraham will pass it to Isaac, Isaac to Jacob, and on and on and on. It looks like when God is not sure that it will be passed on, it will be a wasted effort. He withdraws the manifestation. That's why we must take this thing serious. God will not invest in a container that will waste his blessings. So whatever God wants to do in your life, he wants to be sure that it will be propagated. So you find that, you know, even Jesus was investing a lot in the disciples. He spent more time with the disciples than the public. And that was how whatever Jesus brought was propagated to generations up until now. Jesus wasn't married, you know, so the, the disciples looked like his family, but he invested in them. He taught them the ways of the Lord. And then when Jesus left, they were able to continue with the same blessing. So God is looking at our families, and that will determine the rate and manifestations of his blessings. He doesn't want Abraham to die. And then all that he did in Abraham, he had to now be looking for the other person to now start investing. No, no, no good investor does that. But after Abraham got it, Abraham taught Isaac how to tithe and hospitality and many other things. You see the same thing in Jacob and in the 12 disciples and then the nation of Israel. So we are covenant families and God's blessings upon our families matter. So we must, we must not just serve God by ourselves. I hope the parents are listening to me, our father and mother. We must ensure that it's a household thing. And when God sees that, uh, that is that outpouring of blessings. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Okay, so we, we say families should have a vision. Proverbs 29 verse 18. Proverbs 29 verse 18. Hallelujah. Are you sure you are there with your Bible? This is a verse that many of us are familiar with. Proverbs 29, 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. It looks like where there is no vision, things begin to go down. I mean, the word perish explains that. So we begin by having family vision. We emphasize that a lot last week. If you don't know where you are going as a family, you will end up just anywhere. Many families. I, I didn't have a family vision for years. I just felt we should go to church. Uh, we buy petrol in the generator. We pay school fees. And then we're going to be great. No, 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 no. That cannot replace vision. Vision has to be articulated. 
And I said to every member of this great, fa of this great fa uh, family that each family should craft their family vision. For those that were not around last week Sunday, get the CD or download online and listen. I, I got a lot of great feedbacks from members of the church. People are settling down. Where is your family going? Okay? Don't, don't mistake good education for greatness. Don't mistake the buying of food, uh, petrol, or diesel, as the case may be, uh, paying of accommodation, does not equal to fulfillment of destiny. Everybody does that, one way or the other. That day-to-day -day living does not mean there is a vision. Every family should endeavor to craft a family vision. This defines where the family is heading. It makes all the difference. Uh, you know, and in, in Psalms 127 verse 1, it says, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain, that build it. So whatever vision you are crafting must have the Lord in it. And for the Lord to be in it, it must be from scriptures. So I try to say that people should, I say, I strongly encourage that the crafting of your vision must be scripture based. Our own family vision was crafted from Psalms 112 mainly and amongst other scriptures. So look down and, and, and find some scriptures and from there develop uh, a statement. Not too verbose, not out of this world, something simple. Make it clear. Scripture says write the vision. In our context, type the vision. I encourage you to print it. Paste it all over the house. Let the husband, the wife, the children, and anybody that comes to your house have an idea of where the family is going. And please, when we are crafting our family vision, remember, let everybody be involved, okay? Because uh, uh, some, some, of, some of our men are very autocratic. They will just go to meet God, the way most want to meet God, and craft vision and just dump it. I think everybody should be included. When we are crafting our family vision, uh, Pastor Bimo and I looking at the lines, and then we involve some of our kids that are mature enough, and then it becomes something that everybody can own, and then they can internalize. I wish I had that privilege when I was growing up. I'm sure I would have been better today. Okay, so there must be a family vision. So when, I, when we come together from this lockdown, and I see you in church, I will be asking you, what is your family vision? vision. I'll be asking you to send me your family vision, okay? It shows where you are going. You might not have money for diesel now, for petrol, but where there is a vision, the future is settled. But somebody that has money for accommodation and has money for all those things and does not have a vision, the family can end up anywhere. Vision gives direction. Glory to God. So develop a family, family vision. If it is from scriptures, then you and God are working together for something awesome. I'm praying that in the next five, ten years, giants will rise in our homes. Families will literally be giants. Children great, husband great, wife doing great. That is God's agenda. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, after developing the family vision, we need to have a behavior that behaves the vision. It's not enough to craft, oh, this family will fear the Lord, this family will love people, you know, fine. But you need what we call values, core values, that will help make that vision a day-to-day -day reality, that will define the behavioral pattern. Now, this is the engine room that drives the vision, the core values. Uh, some of us have been part of the um, Insta Live conference we had online uh, for some weeks now. And one of the major, one of the high points of the conference was my chat with Dr. Sam Adeyemi on values, okay? Values. And I was, I was asking him, why, why, why do you place a high premium on values? And he said something that taught me. He said, when you don't have values, you will not have value in life. Values shows what you prioritize. Values shows what matters most to you. It is that place that people's behaviors are, are formed. Let me give you an example. Do you know that some people value material things than knowledge? So you find that when that is a value, they, 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 they value dressing well than growing up upstairs. So such parents, for instance, you see, especially some ladies, they spend a lot of money buying lace. 
buying clothes, buying shoes. You will ask that same lady, in the last 12 months, how many books did you buy? It will shock you. It will even shock her herself. But unknown to her, a value system is driving her behavior. But behavior is what determines destiny. So she's having a lot of clothes. She's not growing upstairs. At work, she begins to have problems because when others are growing upstairs, they'll perform better. So somewhere along the line, her business or career just stagnates. And when the business or career stagnates, she might not have money to buy the clothes later on. Values shape our destiny. Okay? Your values shape our destiny. So if you don't have values, you won't have value. Your value of your values drive your decision, your decision making. So I have 10,000 naira, okay, I have 2,000 naira here, and I value knowledge more than certain things. I rather invest that 2,000 naira in buying maybe books or do some training than buying a new shoe when I have enough shoes already. Your values drive your decision, your decision making your priorities, your habits, and then your behavior determines your character, and our character determines our destiny. And that's, that's what I want us to eat this morning, just ch- a, a checklist of the kind of values you have. Do you value material things, clothing, above knowledge, above personal development? Those who develop themselves will never lack material things. But those who have material things and don't develop themselves will eventually lack material things. But what's your value system? We, uh, we have a culture that likes to pose, that likes to show off. Some people rather borrow money so they can look okay in the midst of friends than keeping a proper financial account. What's your value system? That value system is affecting the shaping of your destiny. And this family month, an opportunity for you to, I mean, thank God for the lockdown. Everybody should take a kind of reflection, looking back again as, okay, how is my life going? Especially if you are a parent. For those of us that are singles, this is the best opportunity for you to develop the right values. For instance, in marriage, you know, when, when we first got married, and then we argue, you know, you argue over things, I realized that for some of us men, we place a high value on being right more than the unity of the family and the peace in the family. So you find that if you don't understand that, you you prefer to be proven that you are right than the family having peace and unity. So when things happen, you argue, you want to prove it, and that proving it can be very... Horrible at times, some people speak horrible words to their spouses. At the end of the day, you are now proven that, yes, you are correct. Praise the Lord. But you have lost the romance in the home. You have lost the unity in the home. You have lost the prayer power in the home. So what's your value system? Do you place being right above unity? And where there is unity, there is progress. And in African culture, leaders or or men especially, we just want to prove that we are right. Maybe that makes you feel like a man. Being right doesn't mean uh, things are okay in the family. But if you place a high premium on unity, because you know the value of unity, then you rather compromise in the sense of uh, letting go of your so-called rights to drive the unity of the family. So those are the real things that make all the difference. So you have families where a man at 70 is still explaining how he has been right in the family for the past 10 decades, how, or seven decades, how he has done everything, but the family is in disarray, but he's still proving that he's right, you know? And then they've lost the glory, they've lost the progress. So I'm just trying to dissect how we are so that we can work on our values. Some families, uh, they value receiving more than giving. Maybe you know somebody like that. Maybe you are like that. Just check yourself. You are always receiving from everybody. You are the one they always give to. You are the one they always send things to. You are the one they also always pray for. You are the one they always cater for. And you always enjoy receiving. But when they check, who did you give to? 
who did you help genuinely in the last five, ten years? They find it hard to pinpoint it. That might be the reason why that family is on the floor. Jesus said it's more blessed to give than to receive. So what's your value system? Those are just, you know, part of things I want us to look at. For instance, some people value their reputation more than their character. Reputation is external, and I grew up in that that kind of environment. So when we go to parties, every couple is looking great. Everybody wants to appear nice. They they want to show that they're okay. Reputation. Some people, that's, that's, that's high on their value list. But the same couple, the same woman, or the same man, when you follow them home, it will shock you the character. <laughs> so I said here in my note, reputation has a lot to do with show-offs, hypocrisy, pretense, outward looking. But character is who you are when no one is looking. So if you don't work on your character, whatever reputation you might have built, it will scatter one day. What's your value system? So you find that in church, for instance, Maybe a man, a husband, everybody likes the man because when he comes to church, he's always acting nice. He's, he listens to everybody. He appears to be the best man in this world. And everybody believes that, oh, this man is awesome. But this man is just showing up, showing off his reputation. The character is bad, attitude bad. Then one day, all that he's doing at home will now come out. And all the reputation he thought he had built can disappear in one week. So it's better to place a high premium on character. The reputation will be settled. So these are things that affect us. I'm sure you know families like that. They can borrow money from everybody on the street just to appear nice at the barrier. And everybody says, ah, you're looking nice. Yeah, they've used three quarters of their salary to buy lace. They're celebrating them. Ah, you say this girl is powerful. This woman is, you know. And then the next thing is the person they are owing money shows up one day to embarrass them. And all that you seem to like about them disappears because they are more about how people see them, how people hail them, how people perceive them. And if you're a young couple, this is the time to deal with such. Your character is what will fuel your reputation on the long run. Value system. So, your values shape your future. Your values shape your behavior. Your values determine your outcome. Values. So apart from the vision statement of the family, today I want to encourage us to also write out values that you want to inculcate in the family that will drive that vision, that will also help the outcome of the family. Let me give you examples uh, that will help us Write it. Of course, when we say values, you don't have to write uh, 100 values. <laughs> it can be maybe, maybe minimum of five, seven, you know, like that, so that everybody can remember. So in our own family, we, we're trying to do something like that for some time now. So we have like five values now, and we hope to adjust it as we, as we grow on. But at least this is helping to shape bit by bit the family. I read the family vision last week Sunday, we're also still tweaking it, okay? So look at these values. We have the first, well, not really in order of importance, but the first here is spirituality. It's a value system in our own family. That is, anything that has to do with God is a priority. So under spirituality, it, it makes the family a praying family. The family that responds to God, spirituality, is different from religion. Is having a relationship with God. It's a value, spirituality. Spirituality. And then we have honor. Honor. That you, honor covers greeting people, valuing people, respecting people. So we want our children as much as they can to learn to honor people, wherever they are, rich or poor, young or old, as much as they are. Now, even if those things are, are not in the family, when you have it as a core value, you start developing it. So you want your kids to greet people, not that an adult will pass by a young child, and the, the young child will be looking at the adult, like waiting for the adult to greet the child first. 
But when you have honor as a, as, a, as a value, you start training the family to respect people, you know. So under honor, we have, you know, that, that helps us with things like hospitality. So when guest comes to the house, we want to treat them well by honoring. How do you honor a guest? By treating them well, okay? And then the third one here is diligence. It's a value in our family. You have to work hard. Oh, we play, oh, we have fun, oh, but you have to work hard. <laughs> That there is no future for the lazy. It's important a child knows that from the beginning. That you must face your work. Work before play. In fact, the play is more enjoyable when you have done the work. Enjoyably well. (laughs) Diligence. So that helps the, the children to want to do their homework on time, to want to give their best to their education as much as possible. And then we have another core value there called excellence. Okay, so while you are Doing all these things, you want to do it well, quality, beautifully. Because you can, be, you can do honor, but it might not be excellent. Even your spirituality. So you, you want to pray in a place. How neat is the place? As little things. And then your homework, your assignments, how excellent it is. Okay? That, that kind of core value will help children to rise to the top of their game. If they can inculcate it now. Another core value we have is generosity. I don't play with that. I know the meaning of that. Stingy families don't have a future. Families that always enjoy taking from everybody. Everybody's always calling them to greet them. Everybody's always giving to them, sending things to them, but they don't do anything out. To the level they should do it, it will be a weak family. So you want to teach your children to be generous at times, I pick clothes in my house to want to give out when I'm putting together beautiful clothes. Our children just go, Daddy, what, what are you doing with these clothes? I want to let them know I'm giving it out. <laughs> wow, why? Is this part? No, because in our culture, people believe that you want to give something, must be something that is bad. Quality, that's part of the excellence anyway. So they also are growing in that attitude of Generosity. If a child can pick that from a young age, their future is almost settled because the Libra soul shall be made fat and he that waters shall be watered also himself. So these are part of our core values. I have some other things here that I'll mention, but I want you to develop your own core values, something that fits into your vision. I'm saying that because families have their strengths and weaknesses. So you want to develop core values that fits into your own family, that fits into your own vision, that also helps you to define the future that you are, you are saying. I'm hoping that we will also add to our own core values. So I have some words here. Hospitality is a fantastic value for any family. Hospitality. Ah, it's a great one. We have that under the honor code in our own family. But somebody else can put hospitality instead of honor. Hospitality. You, anywhere you are, you care for others. You, can, you are kind to people. You are respect to people. You serve them. Service is a, a fantastic core value. A family giving to service. They serve God. They serve people. Those who serve never remain on the floor. Honesty is a powerful value. Honesty. We have that captured on that spirituality. But somebody else can bring it out clearly, especially if you have kids that are already lying. You have problems, maybe you have issues with your child lying already. Then you don't want to hide it. You bring it out as a core value. Honesty, straight. Truthfulness. Another core value is integrity. You have another one, cleanliness. Maybe you have, there are some homes where that's an issue. The husband is a sanguine. The wife is also half sanguine. So everywhere is always scattered. And that's not helping the family. Then such families might have cleanliness as a core value to build that weakness out into strength. Okay? Cleanliness. For some families, if they told you that pride is disturbing your family already, then humility might have to come as one of your core values. So that pride will not destroy the children. Pride can be transferred from father to children. I've seen pride transferred from a mother to daughter. And pride goes before you fall. For such families, humility can be part of your core value. You can have promptness as a core value. I'm sure you know people that no matter the time, they never get it at that time. <laughs> they will tell you they'll be there by 2 p.m. 2 p.m. will be there before 30 p.m. 
But that's not good for business. That's not good for greatness. So you can have promptness as one of your core values. Respect can be there. Obedience to God can be a core value. A family that just, that's their own core value. Instead of writing spirituality, obedience to God. Whatever God says, we follow as a family. And I wrote here a master one there, love. Love is a great core value. So uh, if we can have these things uh, in our homes, I think the future is going to be awesomely bright. Hospitality. Now, you don't go and write 25 core values that when I ask you, how are you, Mr. and Mrs. Um, Agbabiaka, what are your core values? You said, oh, Pastor, let me recite our core values. We have 37 core values. Ah, That's no more a core value. It's now a national anthem. Even the children will not remember. <laughs> so for some people, they can just pick three. Some pick five. Some pick seven. And then you want to, this, uh, this is lockdown period. Let everybody memorize it. Let the mother memorize it. And then you, when, after prayers in the family, like family altar, we call it, or the devotion. Okay, now, okay, can we give, mention our core values? And then you type it out and put it on the fridge everywhere. Just imagine that. And you can focus on that for the next 10 years. You will not be like the masses. That's why vision separates people in their generation. That's why greatness is never by accident. Glory to God. So I want to believe that these core values would help us a lot. Let me close by talking about generosity. What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Uh, Proverbs 13 verse 22. Proverbs 13 verse 22. A good man liveth an inheritance to his children's children. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. I realize in life that the kind of seeds parents sow often determine the outcome of their children. Many parents think that what they do, they've escaped it. It shows up not just in their lives in, uh, in the near future, but it also impact on the destiny of the children. Can we, can we be deliberate with building the future by sowing the right seeds? How do you treat your business partner? How are you faithful with finances? All those seeds we sow affect the outcome of our home. So what, we, what you want to do is, what kind of future do you see? Then start sowing the seeds now. Many of our children will always go to places that parents will not always be with them. So when you see other children whose parents are not with them, can you care for them? Can you love them? Can you help them out joyfully so that when your own child goes to a boarding house or goes to NYSE or travels out to do anything, he will just be experiencing unusual favor from un un unusual sources because what you sow is what you reap. So that when you have a housemaid at home, when you turn the housemaid into a slave, you treat the housemaid or house guy like, a, like an animal. That's somebody's son. That's somebody's daughter. And you are treating them like an animal, like a goat. May they not treat your own children like goats somewhere one day. What kind of inheritance are you leaving for your children's children? I'm not talking about physical inheritance. I'm talking about harvest of blessings. You find Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Do you, know that, do you know that the obedience of Abraham blessed Isaac, yet he was not born? The obedience of Abraham blessed Jacob. So, you are a parent. How, how is your relationship with God? Are you living in complete disobedience like Esau, which eventually affected his generation? We are building our future now by the seeds we are sowing today. So, sow wisely. Invest deliberately. And any time you make a mistake, we often make mistakes. We take a wrong turn. We do a wrong thing. Because you understand this principle, you are eager to repent. You are eager to uproot that wrong seed. Parents are shaping the future of their children, knowingly or unknowingly. Now, I'm not saying that a child's destiny cannot work out. But some children, they discover that they have to fight much more to fulfill destiny than some other children because the things they are battling, uh, the, the unnecessary load, unnecessary weight, evil things that parents transferred to them, distracted them, disturbed their journey before they could find victory. You find that Isaac, 
lead, lived almost <laughs> a spoiled life, kind of, because Abraham had taught too many blessings for him. Glory to God. We are building a great future. So let's do it intentionally. The seeds of today are the harvest of tomorrow. We build the future by the seeds of today. So we'll continue on this next Sunday. Don't forget next Sunday we're having a renewal of vows. If you are married five years and above and you'd love to renew your vows, please uh, get, on, get ready uh, for that part. You know, you dress up, if you want to wear a wedding gown, no problem. But get on a suit and then we, we get across. I'll be, I'll be leading those couples uh, in their renewal of vows. So that you, the union, because the union of that homes, uh, of, that, of those homes can be renewed. And I realize that the moment daddy and mommy are thriving, it impacts on the children. Rebellious children often come out of dysfunctional homes. God will heal our families in the name of Jesus Christ. And for many of us that are singles, I'm so glad for you. Learning these things ahead. Whether you're getting married next year or five years' time or ten years' time, there's nothing wrong with you crafting your family vision now and the core values, what you are seeing ahead. And by the time the, you get married or the person shows up, you are already on the way. Those who know where they are going get there faster. But those who don't know where they are going, either they are delayed on their journey or they end up just anywhere. I hope you've learned something today. Can you rise up on your feet, wherever you are, and let's give thanks to God. Hallelujah. Lift your voice and say, Lord, thank you for what I've heard today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead and praise him. Go ahead and praise him. Go ahead and praise him. Thank him for your homes. If you are single, thank him for your life intentionally. Ah, this is so sacred. Thank him for your life. And if you have made any mistake, receive God's mercy. Receive God's mercy. Hallelujah. Receive God's mercy. Receive God's mercy. Oh, thank you, Lord, for our families. Thank you, Lord, for our homes. Can you begin to pray? Can you begin to pray based on the things we've heard today? Oh, Lord, open my eyes to, to sin better. Heal my home. Strengthen my home afresh. I want this home to be a model. I want this home to be an inspiration to others. Where I have missed the road, Holy Spirit, help me get back on track. Where we have missed the road, Holy Spirit, we beckon on you, you are a helper, to help us get back on track. In the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and make sure you are praying. Okay, maybe your husband is not yet born again, or your wife is not born again, or your children. Take the next few seconds or one minute to pray for them that Christ will reach out to them. You cannot convert any soul. Only Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, can transform any man. But you can pray them into salvation. You can pray them into revival. So go ahead and pray for your spouse or your children, as the case may be, and lift them up into the hands of God. Joshua 24, verse 16. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day, whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood are the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but as for me and my house we will serve the Lord. Can you echo that where you are? As for me, not just me alone, Lord, as for me and my house, my wife, my children, just like you said of Abraham, we will walk in your statutes, we will walk in justice and judgment. We will position ourselves to be carriers of your blessing like Abraham. We want to be carriers of transgenerational blessing. Oh, thank you, Lord. As we pray, if you are listening to me, wherever you are on, this, on the surface of the earth, and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I need to pray for you. Jesus is our Father, as it were. Until you receive that familiness from him, you can't really grow a great family by yourself. If you, are, if you are listening and you are backsliding and you want to get back into the fold, I want to just place your right hand on your chest. I don't know where you are watching from or you are listening from. You want to surrender your heart to Jesus. Just put your hand on your chest and say these precious words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am amazed at your love for me. 
For you died on the cross for my salvation. Today, I, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart. Come in today. Come in to stay. I renounce Satan. I renounce the work of darkness. Only you will I serve. From this moment, I confess Jesus as my Lord. You are not just the Lord of my life. You become the Lord of my household. I surrender my life to you. Take me and use me for your glory. I want to spend eternity with you. Not in hell, but in heaven with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. For those who have made that amazing destiny decision on the website, on the site there, you find some comments, some instructions on where we can have your details. Our team will want to reach out to you so you can be stronger in the faith and they want to see how we can also pray for you. Glory to God. Everyone listening, can you put your hand on your chest? I want to pray a simple prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for what we are learning this amazing month. You brought us to a ministry that is building greatness inside us to showcase your glory. And Lord, a lot starts with our family. Today, we present our families to you, whether we are single or married. We, we dedicate our families to you. We consecrate our families to you. And we declare, like Joshua said, as for us and our household, we will serve the Lord. We will not serve money. We will not serve idols. We will serve you. You are our Lord and Savior. And Lord, we pray that let there be the activation and the manifestation of transgenerational blessings. Let the whole world see it. Let it attract them to serve you. In the name of Jesus. Any home going through any kind of tension as I speak, oh Lord, I pray for healing now in the name of Jesus. Every hold of the devil over that man's mind, over that couple, I command the chains and the bondage of Satan to be broken in the name of Jesus. I ask the Holy Spirit to invade those homes right now and restore peace and restore joy. Every dark cloud, every evil spirit, evil manifestation in any household in form of strife, in form of hatred and bitterness, I command those clouds to be removed, never to return in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, replace it with joy. Replace it with love. We cover those families with the blood of Jesus. Your outcomes are different. And I declare over everyone under the sound of my voice, 2020 will not be a wasted year. In the name of Jesus Christ, that is our verdict. That is my prophetic word over you by the Holy Ghost. This year, 2020 will not be a wasted year. In the name of Jesus, you will flourish in famine. You will experience his restoration. His glory shall be seen all over you. Your case is different. Your case is different in a positive way. In the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and give him glory. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Makasa Kalaba. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We honor you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining. Just hold on for the remaining part of the service, and then um, we'll see you very soon. God bless you. Please put your hands together wherever you are. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. We want to appreciate, recognize, and welcome everyone that is worshiping with Global Impact Church for the first time. Wherever you're watching from in Nigeria and across the nations of the world, we're so glad you chose to connect. We're so glad you chose to link up with us and we want to appreciate you. Wherever you are, you're going to see a link on that screen where you're watching from, whether it's our website or the YouTube or whatever channel you are watching from you're going to see a link. Kindly just click on it and register your data. Register your detail, just your name, your phone number. And in case you have any prayer requests, requests for healing, requests for breakthrough, requests for favor from God, whatever it is, we have a great team of people praying over those requests and God answers us when we pray. So just scribble down that request and we are sure that God is going to meet you at the point of your need. We want to appreciate you again 
amazing. God bless you. Thank you so much. And you can reach us with the numbers that are written also on that link. God bless you. Now it's time to appreciate God with our offering. The Bible says, come before him with worship and with an offering. We don't just come before God just with songs and dancing. We also come with a substance. The Bible says, honor him with the first fruit of your increase. Then shall your burns burst forth. So we're here to honor God. Wherever you are watching from, it's time to give to God. We're going to do that via the online channels. You can see that link as well. You can give online from the website. You can also make transfers from your device. You're going to see right now on the screen the details of our accounts. In case you want to make the transfer via the USSD, you can do that. If you want to make a transfer with your mobile app, you can also do that. Every time we give to God, it is credited on our destiny. Giving done to the kingdom is a giving that endures with harvest. So we must understand that even as we give today. So let's go ahead and do that and release prayers on your offering as we give right now. Father, thank you for our seeds given in forms of offering, tithes, given in form of kingdom investment, and we thank you for your blessing that is resting upon it. Thank you because your word says in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, give and it shall be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together. Shall men give to your bosom? It shall run over. So thank you because this giving is attracting favor. There's an overflow, financial overflow, despite the pandemic, despite the economy crunch. Things are working for us. Lord, we give you thanks. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. So let's give in faith. And I believe that there shall be an abundance coming our way. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Good Sunday to you again. I hope you've been enjoying the service. Let's have this uh, announcement, even as we begin to round up the service today. Wisdom for the week with Yemi David. Uh, devotional prayers and wisdom. Every Monday on Facebook Live, 6 a.m. to 6 30. Uh, try and ensure you, you, you're, you're part of that. It sets the tone for the week, uh, apart from the services we experience on Sunday. And then every Wednesday, our congregational fasting and praying, we post the prayer points on our various platforms. Do your best to engage those prayer points, to pray yourself. I also try to lead us in prayers from my, uh, from my handle on Facebook, 12 noon and 3 p.m. 12 noon and 3 p.m. on Wednesday. But whatever it is, get the prayer points that we have on our WhatsApp page, Facebook page, and all those things, and pray with it. This is an opportunity for you to keep your spiritual life in a proper shape. And then, of course, on Wednesday in the evening, I'll be leading restoration campaign, restoration campaign, breaking stagnation, experiencing God's mercy, replenishing lost years. We've had a great time the last two Wednesday, we are having, we'll be having a greater time on Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. Um, that's on Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. We'll be on YouTube, uh, church handles, my handle, and all over. And then next Sunday, 24th of May, by the way, our wedding anniversary is 25th of May. So most likely we too will be renewing our own vow next week Sunday. Uh, please pray along with us. Uh, the theme, of course, is not easily broken. So we'll be having special vow renewal service. Watch out for more details in the course of the week also, especially from the marriage platforms that we have, the various age groups. And if you want to be a part of that, they will reach out to you or you'll reach out to the group so you can uh, get ready for that next week Sunday. Um, We'll be having a parents' conference. It's a family month, so we want to have a forum where parents can learn. Uh, that is on the 30th of May. It's a Saturday. We'll give us more details by next week, but it's, it's going to be in the morning. We, Pastor Bimbo and I will be hosting uh, Pastor Nomti Odukoya and some other people in practical discussions about parenting, the challenges now, and realities. Uh, that's Parents Conference 2020. It will be online. Watch out for that. Parenting is an art. Parenting is a lot of work. Get ready for that. And then the last Sunday of the month is a special family anointing service. I'll be leading and praying and proclaiming blessings and using the oil as a point of contact for everyone. Uh, get ready for that. That is 
7 a.m. and 9 a.m. every Sunday, and then 11 a.m. for the junior church service, 11.30 for the Ignite, key, uh, Ignite Teens. Uh, we're also on, on, on TV, engage that. From this Sunday, um, 9 a.m. on Wazobia Max, that's on DSTV 259 and UHF 57. 9 a.m. Uh, Sundays for one hour, okay? We have worship, we have the word, and we have a bit of the teenage, uh, uh, teenagers uh, broadcast on Wazobia T- Max TV from this Sunday. On Dove TV, every Wednesday by 8 p.m. And then Rave TV, uh, that's good. Rave TV is on Go TV, Star Times, TS TV, Free TV, all by 9 a.m. All materials are available at shop. Globalimpactng.org. Of course, the online platforms, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, ensure you engage them. Uh, that's at Global Impact NG. When you see Global Impact NG, just uh, uh, get into that. Uh, or online through the website, globalimpactng.org slash watch live or any of those social media platforms. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. Global Impact NG, okay? Don't miss uh, the opportunities we have uh, as regards learning uh, for, uh, concerning, uh, I mean, growing spiritually and breaking the barriers of spiritual decline. Uh, God will preserve us through this lockdown. We believe that things are going to come back to normalcy faster than we expect. Keep safe. Be strong in Jesus' name. Amen.